you've been following along with us this season, you're probably aware that we started several transplants in the greenhouse earlier in the season. And now that we're approaching mid-April and the soil temperatures are around 65 to 70 degrees consistently, these transplants are ready to get out into the garden so they can continue to thrive. We've got tomatoes and peppers, which really, for Oklahoma, we need to put them out into the garden as transplants. Now, there are a few other warm season crops that can be directly sown, but let's go ahead and start with our tomatoes first. So we've got a Midnight Snack, which is an All-America Selection Hybrid, and this is an indeterminate indigo a cherry tomato. So because it's indeterminate means we're going to need to stake it a little bit because it'll continue to grow. You can see that indigo color is actually coming out on the stems, but it'll be really present on the cherry uh, tomato that we harvest from it later on in the season. You can see the nice roots that we have already got established here. Again, when you're planting tomatoes, feel free to plant them a little deeper if you're worried about the wind snapping them off because they might be a little leggy. So with this indigo tomato, the purple color is actually the same uh, pigment that is what gives blueberries the purple color as well. And so, in fact, when you're eating this, you're also going to get some antioxidants. This pepper hybrid is called Mad Hatter, and with that name, it might make you a little suspicious just to go munching on it because it might sound like it might be a little hot, but actually it is a sweet pepper. It gets its name because it has a really unique fruit shape to it. Um, it almost looks like a squished pepper or more like a top. It's kind of a three-sided pepper. So we're going to plant these. They're a little bit shorter, so we're going to plant these down below here. And they won't need any staking or anything like that, so they'll be a good companion right below our indeterminate uh, midnight snack tomatoes. So fortunately for us, peppers are pretty easy to grow and they really thrive and take off and start producing in our summer heat. But it can be tricky deciding which peppers to grow. So we're not just planting one pepper, obviously. In fact, we're going to be planting even more than these two. This one is called um, Pretty and Sweet. Um, and it's aptly named because it's a compact 18 inch multicolored fruited uh, pepper plant. So it has a very ornamental look to it but it's also very tasty. So we're going to put this smaller pepper plant down here in our little drawers. Um, of course, we'll need to give them extra irrigation because there's not quite as much rooting space down here. Um, but it should be a nice little pepper. Um, again, compact, so only getting to be about 18 inches tall. Now that we've got our tomatoes and our pepper transplants planted, we're going to start putting some of our seeds that we're going to directly sow into our garden. Again, these are warm season uh, crops that we can directly sow, at cucumbers, okra, corn, and squash. Now, you might see squash and cucumber transplants available, or you might have started them on your own, that's fine. Um, but they do just as fine starting them from seeds, and it's also a cheaper option a lot of times. So this first uh, crop that we're going to plant is a cucumber called Parisian gherkin. And as the name implies, it is a mini or a gherkin pickling cucumber. It's going to have some black spines to it. This All-America Selection Hybrid um, is a bush but semi-vining uh, cucumber. So we're, again, we're going to put it on the back side of our trellis here in case it does want to vine. We can attach it to the trellis. Now, a lot of times when you plant cucumbers, um, they'll say to mound it or something like that. We're kind of working in a raised bed area here, so we're not too worried about drainage. Um, we are putting this on the south side of an area, um, so it'll get plenty of sunlight because cucumbers thrive in the sun. But they're pretty uh, hefty drinkers, so they're going to they're gonna want a lot of water. We're going to plant just two seeds in each of our hole, and we're going to plant those about... 20 inches apart. Now it's time to plant squash and we've got two different types of hybrids that we're going to plant. One's a butternut which is called butterscotch squash and the other one is a bassanova um, and bassanova is a zucchini type squash. So it's going to actually have a little bit lighter green skin than what you might see on some zucchinis which actually makes it easier to find when it's time to harvest amongst all that green foliage. Now this is a bushing type squash, so we want to make sure to give it plenty of room so that it can bush out and also so that maybe we can spot those squash bugs a little bit easier because we know they probably will find our plants. 
but hopefully we get a few fruit before that. So here we're going to plant these again, just using our dibble, we're going to make a hole. And these are pretty small seeds, so we don't have to go too deep. Um, and they're pretty sizable seeds. So we're going to go ahead and put two seeds in each hole to reassure that we'll get some germination there. And we're going to plant them about four feet apart. And when we start to see those come up, we'll come back and, and trim one of those seeds out. The other squash that we're going to plant is called a butterscotch squash. And like I said, it is a butternut squash. So it's going to be a vining squash. However, it is more of a compact vining squash, but we're going to give it about five feet spacing between plants. Now with this compact vine, you're actually going to get a compact fruit also. Um, in fact, it'll be about appropriate for one to two servings of butternut squash. The next crop that we're going to plant is corn, and this corn is called American Dream. Um, it is a bicolored kerneled corn, and so we're actually going to get yellow and white kernels in the same cob. And it's a great uh, corn to use in practically any way you want to serve it. You can grill it, you can uh, steam it, or you can can it also. Now you'll see this uh, seed is treated, so we want to make sure that we've got our gloves back on. Um, and we're going to plant these on about a 12 inch spacing. Now when you're planting corn, you want to make sure to plant it in a block or in rows um, and not just put a couple of random plants throughout your vegetable garden because corn is actually wind pollinated for the most part and so you want to make sure that that wind is able to take the pollen from the tassels that are at the top of the plant down to the silks that are on the female part of the plant down below where you see the ears being formed. So by planting it in a block that's going to improve your pollination and increase your production. So we've got three rows that are about 12 inches apart and we're planting them again 12 inches between each seed down the row. Now we, you notice that with all the other warm season crops that we've planted we've directly sown our seeds straight out of our package into the ground. With okra you want to do something a little bit different. You want to pre-treat it by actually soaking those seeds for at least 12 hours prior to planting but no more than 24 hours. You can see here the seeds are um, soaking and as they do that, I'm going to pour the water out a little bit so we can catch some of these seeds to plant them. And you can see how they've kind of puffed up just a little bit. Um, it almost looks like they're already starting to sprout even, but that water has allowed to penetrate underneath that seed coat and that will enhance germination. Um, when we're planting these directly into the ground. Now if we looked at just our regular seeds as they come out of the package, they're just going to look like hard BBs basically. So these seeds, um, while you could plant them directly into the garden, you're going to have a much better germination rate if you pre-soak them for at least 12 hours prior to planting. Of course we've got to plant okra in our southern garden and this hybrid that we're planting is called candle fire and it is a red okra. Um, and it's actually, the pot is going to be a little more rounded and less rib than what you might typically find. Now the plant itself gets to be about four feet tall, so we're going to put it on about a two foot spacing. This particular hybrid has tested and was judged well for performance, taste, tenderness, and texture. So we're anxious to see how it does here in our Stillwater Garden. Now that we got our warm season garden planted, all we've got to do is water and wait a little while. And as these plants continue to grow, we will of course side dress them with a little fertilizer to continue to give them some nourishment as they grow even larger. And soon we'll be having a bountiful harvest. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.